Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. This isn't an apology, I'm just telling you right now, this video is going to go on for as long as this video is going to go on for. No doubt we will discuss this on Friday Night Tights tonight as well, but there's plenty of things which I want to say about this attempted hit piece from Salon website. Yes, that distinguished multiple pool at surprise winning <laughs> i'm only kidding it's trash it's trash this and i say attempted hit piece because this is one of the most poorly pathetically badly researched uh pieces that i've seen in a, a long time and in actual fact it's pretty damn hilarious in some of the cases which we will get to but of course it's another website which is coming to the the aid running to lend their support in this uh, most patriotic of months for america july uh to to mama disney oh yes 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 because it's again attacking youtubers that dare how dare you how dare you be critical of marvel and star wars which both fall under the disney bracket but before i start uh if you don't know who salon is uh this is salon this is an article that they did uh six years ago uh 2015 seven years ago uh yes that's the type of people who work at salon they're taking the moral high ground. <laughs> They're taking the moral high ground. <laughs> now, they have changed the title uh, of this article, by the way. This article uh, had a slightly different title. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, Time to Stop Ignoring the Fandom Menace. That's what it was. And then they changed it to let's all stop ignoring the fandom menace it's real it's winning well the fandom menace as uh we all know it's uh, a, a hashtag it's a hashtag now some people might think of it as philosophy but it, it, it's just a hashtag it's a hashtag showing that you are standing up against this this corporate bullshit which has infected our franchises and you want that to be known to Disney, Paramount, whoever it may be. And it arose, of course, in the, the wake of uh, The Last Jedi, uh, which was uh, the worst Star Wars film ever made and uh, just a sack of garbage. But of course, they're going to do their opening gambit with what Gary would call the bigotry of low expectations. Uh, they are going to try and present the case that you cannot in any way, shape or form, criticize people who aren't straight white males, essentially. That's where they're coming from. We know that, you know that. Uh, because are they to be held at a different standard to all? No. When you see videos from, whether it be myself, Geeks and Gamers, Ryan... Uh, Gary, etc., uh, etc. Et when we are talking about the shows, we are talking about the characters of the show. Now, you'll notice that when we, the uh, Kenobi show has been criticized, we talk about Reva because Reva is the character. And if we want to criticize Moses Ingram's acting, then that's a separate entity. But you'll notice that the language used when you're talking about Reva is completely different to the language used if you were talking about Moses Ingram. Now, I believe that Moses Ingram was awfully cast, terribly cast for this role. They were not suited for this role. They didn't have any gravitas. They didn't have any presence. They were very one note. They weren't believable. Now, some of that you could blame is due to the absolute pathetic writing of the series. And it was pathetic. But in the same instance, if you're an actor, you've got to try and elevate that material. And they didn't. But one of the criticisms that I have of Kenobi as a general rule is that the acting 
across the board, and this includes you and McGregor, was pretty poor. But again, I don't think there was particularly much to really get your teeth into as an actor here because the writing was so basic and pathetic and all over the place. But let's get into this, this article now. I think we've established foundations pretty well. Uh, one of the first highly public instances of Ms. Marvel trolling happened nearly a decade ago, courtesy of Stephen Colbert. Don't give a fuck. Moving on. Nearly a decade later, a group of self-important white guys... Ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we have a racist writing the article. Because it's just been broken down to self-important white guys. Now, I'm going to stop there. Because they are talking about, in their eyes, the fandom menace. And they're talking about the fandom menace as if it's an, an organization... So let's just play their game. Let's say the fandom menace, which is just a hashtag, is a collective group of people that are united against Star Wars, against Star Trek, Doctor Who, yada, 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 yada. Have you seen the people who are on our streams, in our videos, in our social media, coming from all different backgrounds, both genders, sexual orientations, etc., etc. You couldn't get a more eclectic group of people. You couldn't get more diverse because the commonality we have isn't skin color like these racists that out themselves for their bigotry and their sexism and their racism. But we are united under the bracket of fandom. Because unlike these pieces of piss, we're actually fans of the franchise or former fans of these franchises that are not happy with the way that the corporations who have now taken them over are treating them. It's not a difficult philosophy to understand. But of course, they don't want to believe that because it goes against their narrative. They want to paint the pathetic, it's white man problems, it's white man fault. Because these people, as we've seen from last week with the Supreme Court and Clarence Thomas, are disgusting racist filth. And they don't believe that races and genders and uh, sexual orientations are equal no they're there to be used and abused they're there to be wheeled out and used as a weapon or a shield when it's convenient and necessary for them and the moment somebody who's black gay female goes against their narrative then wait for it all the uh, all the words come out all the words come out of abuse because they're hypocritical pieces of crap and we deal with this all day every day we get called ists phobes you know the drill by now and some people say how do you deal with it it's easy to deal with it because they're meaningless words they have no meaning they have no power because when you have to go to in an extreme to call somebody a Yahtzee, to call somebody a white supremacist, to call them a bigot, a homophobe, etc., etc., they have no argument. They have to go to the most extreme. There's nowhere else for them to go. And what's it based on? Some fucking person's opinion on bloody Star Wars or Marvel film or Doctor Who. It's insanity, but that's the insane left for you. Comply or be destroyed. Come get us. Come get us. Your words have no power. You're a Yahtzee. No, I'm not. You're a homophobe. No. You're a bigot. Nope. 
Where did they go? They got nowhere. Nowhere to go from there. So when you're opening Gambit again is self-important white guys, then you're already exposing yourself as a fucking moron. With no argument and nowhere to go. Trying to singularize the blame? The blame of what? The blame of criticism? Because as we all know, they're now trying to conflate criticism with racism. That's their new play. If you are critical of a black character, you must ergo be racist. That's not the fact at all. Again, the bigotry of low expectation. How dare you be critical of a black actor? How dare you be critical of a female actor? How dare you be critical of a gay actor? Etc, etc. It's trying to conflate criticism to shut you up, to silence you, to prevent your voice from being heard. Stop talking truth, bigot. Stop bringing your opinion to the table. That's what it's there for. And I say, no. I'll happily be vocal. I'll happily be loud. I'll happily give my opinion. And when billion dollar corporations are mad about this, holy shit, what is wrong with the people they are employing? If Disney is so secure with the products that it's putting out, why does it keep creating these hit pieces? Why does it keep uh, working together with, with these organizations to construct them? Why does it go after? Why do we have links to rewriting Ripley, which will come up here as well, and Pablo Hidalgo within the Disney Corporation? Why are they so scared of us well it's simple when you look at people like critical drinker for example he has a voice he's exceedingly articulate concise with his viewpoints and his videos are getting millions of views he's over a million subscribers with millions of views on his videos because people are starting to listen because when they substituted entertainment for ideology, they lost a huge proportion of their fan base. And that fan base is saying, bring back our entertainment and not our and not your ideology. Stop making it about you and make it about who it should be for, which is the customer. Not the consumer. The customer. But they don't, because as, as Alex Kurtzman said a year or so ago, it's not about Star Trek for him. It's about using the platform to spread their messages. Well, the far left's messages are messages of fucking filth. So they can shove them where the sun don't shine. They're messages of inclusion and diversity is laden with hypocrisy because as soon as a black voice speaks out as soon as a female voice speaks out as soon as a gay voice speaks out you suddenly turn on them with vitriol and everyone can see this because unlike the corporations that think you're stupid and dumb and sheep there just to be grazed in the field for money you actually are intelligent and your brain can work this shit out real quick. And that's why more and more people flock to channels like mine, Gary's, Drinkers, Geeks and Gamers, Eric July, etc, etc. And the message that I get, the email that I get the most when I get an email through from somebody is something along the lines of, I thought I was alone in my thinking. I thought I was the only one that saw this. I'm so glad to have found a channel that is talking about the points which I've been thinking about myself.
and these channels continue to grow and the fandoms disney marveling at the success of kenobi on on disney plus a a, a streaming channel that apparently boasts over a hundred million subscribers uh with kenobi getting 2.5 million views to less than two and a half percent of your subscription base is watching that that's not a huge amount that's a tiny amount at the end of the day when your kamala khan ms marvel show the greatest the the best review disney show of all time on disney plus gets half the number of viewers than the lowest marvel tv show that there had been to date 775,000 versus hawkeye's awful 1.5 million Their propaganda, their narrative doesn't stack up with the truth. And that's why these hit pieces are created. This is why the attempt to pull down channels, to demonize channels. My channel is under attack, as the quartering would say. That's why this is there. That's why these articles are here kiss ass so they get their access somebody who hates fandom kissing ass on an organization that hates its audience and we're the bad guys we're the bad guys let's just go through uh a couple of these like i said this video is going to do what it's going to do nearly a decade later another group of self-important white guys are railing against kamala's khan right to exist in the marvel universe the difference is they're not joking even if some of them insist that they are oh you you can talk on behalf of the people creating the videos can you well first of all that's absolute bullshit how many how many Marvel Ms. Marvel videos are there really out there? Not not that many. Why? Because the show is just just shit. It's just no point. It's a nothing. It's a no entity. When Drinker and I did our review of episode one, and I still have, and I've said this before on a stream, I have the full unedited watching on on of, of Drinker and I. This this fifty minute long viewing of us watching Ms. Marvel together. And there's barely any conversation because guess what? Nothing's happening in the show. Every so often we'll we'll try and say a comment ourselves, just just to to kind of reiterate that we are here and you know we are here together. But at the end of the day, that first episode was just such a non-entity that we just didn't want to do anymore. It was boring. It was drivel. You know the the performances were fine but that there was nothing to talk about and this nonsense of kamala khan's right to exist we have no power over the existence of kamala khan existing marvel do dick shit but you know if we're making jokes they're not jokes they're serious because you know here we are the actors are varied as their motivations you see no they're not some engage in review vomit bombing as they did to disney plus's ms marvel how how can they get involved in review bombing ms marvel the bestest viewed marvel show of all time if there is a review bombing it's in the positive Strong Chi's audience score, according to Rotten Tomatoes, is 98%. <laughs> if there's review bombing going on, it's in the opposite direction. But you see, when there's positive review bombing, that's fine. 
that's fine. And we see how binary the internet is. That's why Metacritic, you get a lot of 10 out of 10s, a lot of 1 out of 10s. That's the binary nature of the internet. Don't like, zero. Loved, 10. And what does that do? Let's just, let's just play this scenario out. What happens if uh, Ms. Marvel... No. What happens if Spider-Man No Way Home gets review-bombed into oblivion? Audi uh, uh, critics, 75, 80%. Audience score, 10%. What does that do? What does that translate into? Nothing! Did it stop people going to the cinema and, and making a box office of $1.9 billion? No. Of course it didn't. Nor would it. These sites that we use, we, we play with Rotten Tomatoes because it's such a pathetic site. It's such a doctored site. I think it's owned by Warner Media. We've seen how many times when a show gets negativity, it gets pulled, it gets reset. All these things happen. Audience scores stay miraculously at the, exactly the same number from the day that a show or a film's released right up until now. What a coincidence. What a steady progression of all the way through. They're meaningless. You think that people are going to run tomatoes or they're going to Metacritic and they're seeing a score and going, well, I was going to see this movie, but you see, after seeing the Metacritic score and the Tomato Man, I, in my own conscience and will, have decided not to see this movie. Ah, oh, fuck off. Not one person did that. They're meaningless projections of like and dislike that are wheeled out when they want to wave the flag at something and wheeled out when they want to criticize something meaningless dross oh some engage in review bombing as they did to Disney Plus's Ms. Marvel, the greatest uh, Marvel show of all time. Hours after its debut, hours after its debut, Marvel put out a tweet saying that it was the greatest, uh, most bestestest ever reviewed Marvel show of all time. Because it's an easy way to kick what they see as the social justice warriors hornet's nest. Now you get one thing correct here. You get one thing correct here. Yes. Do you know why? Because it's the way to get attention. To say, Oi, we don't want this, or this is shit, or you're doing this wrong. You're not adhering to the canon. You're not adhering to the characters, uh, background, etc. And all of these kind of things. And one way to do that is to make a point like this. Sometimes it's the only way. And that's what people do. Again. How does it affect the actual show? It doesn't. How does it affect the film? Doesn't. There's no tangible result from this, which will affect the bottom line. Now, if people aren't watching, do you know why they're not watching? Because they don't want to watch it. Why did Ms. Marvel have 775,000 viewers? Half of the lowest to date so far, 1.5 from Hawkeye. Is it because the world's racist? Or is it because people are actually believing what Ma Disney and Marvel and Star Wars are, are espousing? Which is, if you don't see yourself represented on screen, then you can't relate. And if that's the message that you're trying to push then your audience of faithful sheep have just gone, well, I don't see myself on the screen, so I can't relate, so this isn't for me. 
You gotcha yourself. You played yourself. But it's not. It's not that. Do you know why Ms. Marvel was such a low show? Is it because it, it was a Pakistani American? No. Was it because it was a female? No. It was because nobody fucking knows who they are. Because for all the ego and arrogance and hubris of the comic book industry, the people who are running it, the writers and the artists, the pieces of shit who have within a decade managed to absolutely just fucking glass their own industry with their ideology and politics. They think in their own little circle, Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel is an important character. You go onto the street and you ask a regular person, they won't have a fucking clue who they are. So when you make your bespoke show, when you make your niche show and you get a niche audience, that's what happens. I go out there right now onto the street. I say, who's Spider-Man? Virtually everyone will say Peter Parker. I'll go out on the street and I'll ask uh, uh, just normies, who's Batman? V virtually everyone will go, Bruce Wayne. Who's Superman? Virtually everyone, Clark Kent. Who's Ms. Marvel? Who? Who's Ms. Marvel? Who? Just because it has the banner of Marvel or the banner of Star Wars doesn't immediately translate to numbers and figures and monetization and merch sales or whatever. That has to be earned. Those characters have to become beloved and embedded within the culture of fandom. And they don't with you. You throw these fucking characters out. You say inclusion and diversity. And you expect, because maybe you stick, as you love to say now, the mantle of Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, onto something, and ideologically change those characters, that they will automatically gain the fan base that that character originally had. It doesn't work like that. You know it doesn't work like that, and it makes you fucking mad that it doesn't. Why aren't they complying to our ideology? Because the characters were never loved, respected, etc. for their ideological values. They were loved and respected for their heroic and moral values when heroes used to be heroes but you destroyed that star wars the deconstruction of superheroes dc marvel you destroyed all of it all of it and you're so angry and mad that people aren't complying to your ideology because of it. You are so angry and mad that people are dare being critical of ideological changes. That the only way that you can attempt to debate them, to argue with them, is to call them a fucking Nazi and a bigot and a homophobe and a white supremacist. It just shows how pathetic and how much of a non-argument you have because there isn't any justification to take a character of 30 years who's been straight and then suddenly go they're gay now there is no justification in that at all you have intrinsically changed that character completely and then you get mad that the fan base of that character for 30 years turns around and goes what the fuck? what what Oh, are you a homophobe? No, do you know who is the homophobe? You. You. Because you think changing the sexual orientation of a character or changing the color of a character 
or changing the gender of a character encompasses what that character stood for and it doesn't because all the changes that you just made are superficial and vacuous ones but then you do nothing with them or you try to push them based on that ideology and you intrinsically change everything that that character was and then you just don't understand you don't understand when the fans turn around and go no we good thanks no because this is really getting on now we'll leave the article for friday night tights but i just want to skip through a couple of highlighted words that they use themselves and just go through one thing as well actually with moses ingram fuck it i'm in for a penny i'm in for a pound now with moses ingram and kenobi we all know that was i say we all know because it, you just have to follow the timeline of it when reaver was first announced yeah there was a lot of eye rolling and there was a lot of here comes the bait and switch and there were some people going oh just why don't you give it a chance oh you're the you're a this you're an ist you're a phobia and ism etc but the fact of the matter is the people every single one of us that said oh here comes the bait and switch were right every single one of us that predicted the story of reva were right because disney and star wars and marvel have become so predictable with their inserted characters that are going to usurp the main character, the character that the show is sold on, that it's it's not even a, a, an intelligent guess. It's just almost taken as given. But before the show had even come out, it was Moses Ingram that came out with an interview saying, well, Disney told me to prepare to be prepared for racisms. It was Moses Ingram that said that. There weren't any racisms that I was aware of, that I saw. Moses Ingram was the one that planted the seed. And then there was a nicely edited Instagram video for her, from her. Who was it edited by? Don't know. I can always guarantee you it wasn't her. And it had some, some nasty comments, comments which should not exist, but they do. But they were in no context. There was no context to them. Who did them? Is that person verified? How many followers? All this sort of stuff. And there was just a small handful that was done. But suddenly, this small handful of non-context hate towards Moses Ingram was conflated into, she's under attack! Quartering, stand down. And then what did we get? Well, we got Ewan McGregor. We got Ewan McGregor in his car going, hey, thanks for making us um, the, the less than 2% of the uh, subscriber subscription-based highest rated. <laughs> also, I hear a lot of, I'm hearing about racisms against Moses Ingrams. You're not Star Wars fans if you're a racism against Moses Ingram. All of this stuff was coming from Disney, Disney, Disney. All of it manufactured racism. But that's all they needed to do. They just needed to manufacture it, get it out there, and then let mainstream media shill mainstream media do what they do. Blame the fans. This is also another thing which just puts off regular people. It's like the comic book industry. A lot of people were turned off. The silent customer left. They didn't take to Twitter. They didn't voice their opinion on Twitter or social media or write a, uh, an angry letter to the editor-in-chief 
or put a blog up on MySpace or Facebook. They just left. Why do they leave? Because they see the behavior of the company and they go, ooh. I don't want I don't I don't want to have anything to do with this company. When you got writers and artists for DC and Marvel caught telling fans to fuck off. Telling fans that have been critical of the 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 way that stories and characters have been changed. Oh, you're not my customer. The comic shop's my customer. Basically throwing the comic shop under the bus. Because they know full well that their customer is not the comic shop. Their customer is the end reader, the end user. And so that's how they justify speaking to you like trash. Stabbing you in the back after being a loyal customer. And they haven't changed. They haven't changed one bit. And so the silent customer, they just stop. They stop buying. They cancel their comics from the comic book shop. And what happens? It's the comic book shop that fails because of it. It's the comic book shop that takes the hit. While the pompous twat on Twitter that's been telling people to fuck off and this, that, and the other. Suddenly they find their industry shrinks. And it's like this as well. After... The Last Jedi, there was a very vocal split. A very vocal split between people who, who claim to like it, I call them liars, and people who didn't like it. But there was also, between those vocal warring factions, a huge, silent group of people that just left. And they left, not because necessarily The Last Jedi was a bad film and they didn't like it, but because of the reaction from Disney afterwards. The reaction of Disney to start calling their fans racist and sexist and all this. Suddenly we started to get the rise of the corporate blaming their customer. Blaming their customer. The people who bring in the bread. The do re me to the companies. They were the ones who were to blame. Well, if you didn't like The Last Jedi, then you hate Kelly Marie Tran. No. No, not Kelly Marie Tran. The shitty character of Rose Tico, which was garbage. But you see, again, they can't handle criticism. They don't want to have the criticism because... A lot of their choices are ideologically created. And so if you are criticizing the character, you're criticizing the race, the sex, the gender, the sexuality of the character in their eyes. That's the way they want to twist it and pervert it. And the silent majority, they just go they'll go and if they're into fandoms if they're into geekdom then they'll most likely just find somewhere new to put their money because these people us geeks geek lives matter it's not just one fandom that we tend to hitch our wagon to we might have a favorite but most of us are into multiple different franchises and geekdoms and fandoms, whether it be Transformers, whether it be Lord of the Rings, whether it be G.I. Joe, whether it be Lego, Warhammer, whatever it may be. You can just turn around and move your money somewhere else. Silently, never to be seen again. And then we have rows and rows and rows of Marvel toys and Disney toys on clearance. Because nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants the characters. Nobody's interested. But keep 
blaming your customer. It's working out well. Keep hiring fuckwits like this and pathetic shill sites like this that, you know, hire that sort of person to go after Geeks and Gamers and Ryan Kinnell and the quartering. It'll work out for you, I promise. Not many joking. It will erode your customer base consistently. More and more people will drop off. And just one more thing, because I've really gone on. But one more thing I want to say. When these articles come out, a lot of the time it's very interesting because they'll always refer to the the critical voices as as the loud minority. If it's such a minority, why are you even bothered in the first place? You know, a little barking dog, it gets ignored. So if they are such a, a, a loud minority, how can that even affect your franchise? Because as you're saying, it's a minority. It doesn't have any effect on us. It's a nothing. It's a non-entity. It's a non-entity that we are putting a lot of our time and attention into trying to shut down. And that's because it's not a loud minority, folks. It's a very loud and vocal voice that spans hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And if they want you to comply, if they want you to just shovel up this shit that they've been churning out, they have an audience that will do so. But it's funny because that audience didn't turn up for Ms. Marvel. And that audience didn't turn up to Black Widow, which lost money. And that audience didn't turn up to the Eternals, which lost money. And that audience didn't turn up to Shang-Chi, which basically broke even, might have made a few million, no more than about 10 or 20 million. Didn't turn up for that. Doctor Strange, which had a monster opening weekend. Monster. Set to go whoosh, well over a billion. Well, suddenly the brakes got put on why because people saw the film and unlike star wars uh, star wars star wars unlike spider-man no way home where people saw that they saw what the writers were trying to do they saw the respect that was shown to the legacy characters that they went back and watched it again and again and word of mouth spread and more people went and 1.9 billion later whereas Doctor Strange even though it did well 950 odd million decent number don't get me wrong but it should have done way over that based off the first weekend but it didn't because the show the film was shit and so the word of mouth spread and people stopped where is your audience of inclusive and diverse loving people for all these shows which aren't working where are they it's as if they don't exist it's as if they're just a loud voice on twitter shouting away barking away yes mama disney oh you mama disney stick a strap on on and do me up the shit of mama disney But it don't translate into money because it didn't with Black Widow. And it didn't with Shang-Chi. And it didn't with the Eternals. And here we are on the precipice of the next show because this is consume and move on. We got Thor, Love and, <laughs> Love and Chunda. And then after that, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. But hey, Marvel, you're the ones who are telling us that this is to get with the program. And if you don't like it, you know, if you, you bigots don't like this stuff, you are the, the, the loud minority. Then they should turn out in droves for these shows. But it's not translating that way. Weird, huh? 
<laughs> okay, folks. I think I've gone on for long enough. Tune into Friday Night Tights. We'll go into this article pretty much in depth, I have no doubt. There's plenty of stuff here which you're just going to piss your pants laughing at. Until the next video, take care. Bye for now.